Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Chinetsky. Joining me as always is my co-host, <laughs> Justin Paul of Supplement Snoop. How are you, my friend? Uh, I'm already laughing. Apparently, just everybody, I just was, I, I was just shutting my phone off, you know, so we don't get interrupted here. Yeah. And I had a text message from uh, Robbie over to Pollen. Yeah. He had already shown me because he's like, hey, I just want you to know that I'm talking shit about you. <laughs> And showed me the message he sent you earlier today. (laughs) And then now he just sent me something else. He's talking shit about me to someone else. So I was just looking at this and and laughing as I was going to shut my phone off. Yeah, so uh, for the the listeners at home, uh, I'll let Justin explain with... uh, Somebody, the the Supplement Santa, visited you this week. (laughs) Yeah, sure did. Um, I got a package yesterday and I opened it up and I was like, what in God's name is this? Um, let me, so this is not the prettiest, uh, okay. So before let's do a disclaimer. All right, everybody don't, don't do as I say, not as I do. Okay. (laughs) So I get this pre-workout in the mail. It says warning, use common fucking sense on the label. This is a anarchy labs assassin, but this is. Two long... versions ago. <laughs> so I think the expiration date is March of 2019. Yeah, March 2019. So yep. I'm like, who the hell sent me this? And then as I was going through, there's a whole bunch of samples in there too. And I was like, this has to be Robert because of the companies I know that have been sending you stuff and ones that you work with. And so I got a nice, uh, I got a nice package. I got a couple of nice ones from from some friends this week that know my style and. So I may or may not have taken the – this is the DMAA version of Assassin. I may or may not have taken it today, and I may or may not have loved every second of it. And <laughs> <laughs> I messaged Robbie, I think, and you at the same time about taking it, and yeah. Robbie's like, you're a sick fuck, man. <laughs> yeah. And Robbie, for the listeners out there, Robbie has always maintained that this is one of the worst tasting pre workouts he's ever tried. And I, I've tried it. It's a sangria flavor, and it's – it's not I'm as bad. bad as Robbie bad. would make it sound, but I mean, he's used to really good flavored things because that's what sure. they try to do. In addition to making really good formulas, they try to make really good flavored things out of pollen too. And Robbie said, man, you guys are fucking sickos because yeah. <laughs> there's no way on earth yeah. you should like this, this pre-workout in any yeah. way, shape or form. He told me, he's like, well, he's like, if you tell me you like the flavor, I'm going to unfriend you and follow you and all that stuff. And I was like, it really wasn't that bad, man. Yeah, I've had much worse things, especially if you ever try any naturally sweetened or like vegan stuff. That shit mm-hmm. is worse than anything with an artificial sweetener in it. Yeah, but I compared DMAA. I was talking to a couple people about it today, and I said it's sort of like, you know how, you know, maybe, well, hopefully when you're younger, you know, you, you have maybe kind of a dysfunctional relationship, and it's kind of crazy and almost ruins your life, and but it's kind of fun at the same time. You know, like you, you enjoy it, like yeah. in a sick way. Like that's kind of what DMAA is like, and so to have that back in my life is a little scary. <laughs> a good thing man it's a, it's a very good thing but anyway i appreciate you for you know i always tell people these days i have no interest in in hunting down dma right. uh, anymore i just don't i i don't yeah. trust any any of these fucking you know companies that are trying to you know make do this and that and and you're actively breaking the law and i i'm i'm a libertarian you know by nature but the facts are facts if i'm going to put this stuff in my body and I don't know exactly what it is. I do have a little bit of a problem with that. So I always advise people don't, you know, don't seek it out because. Correct. Yeah. But we know this is legit because it was made while it was still being made. Yeah. And, and allowed to be made. And uh, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> I man, forgot it's, how, good. it's been a long time since I had DMAA. Agreed. It's, it's good stuff. I would have sent you also a uh, tub of mesomorph with the dmaa in it but it was completely uh clumped together solidified so there's no way you would have been able to uh get any use out of it whatsoever yeah this one uh wasn't too bad i mean granted it was sealed and everything that's not that clumped up not really um it's actually not i mean and besides dmaa right so there's four gram citrulline 3.2 bit alanine creatine got some leucine taurine carnitine agmatine 750 milligrams of phenethyl ethyl amine. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. That's <laughs> a lot, yeah. It's not just, but you know, he's got CoQ10 in there. 
See, yeah. no, it's not. Health. It's not just about. It's a, it's a healthy know, pre-workout. <laughs> healthy pre-workout. Four milligrams Johan binds, sixty-five synephrine, eighty, eighty DMA. Yep. And four fifty caffeine, just for just, the for, just for the cherry on top. So that was my day today. It was a, a you know, it, I'm still doing home workouts, of course, but right. Um, boy, I had a good one. I bet you did, and I want to thank uh, Mrs. Snooper. Uh, being complicit in this, she was the one that I reached out to her and got your address so I could uh, package bomb you with some all with some goodies. Yeah, she's sneaky, man. She's sneaky. I found that out every year, like for my birthday. I find out how devious she can really be, <laughs> and how devious my my friends can be. Yep. About just lying to me and. You oh, know, yeah. doing, uh, but I appreciate it. It was good. I also had some of the um, it was Titan Titan mm-hmm. vanilla protein yeah man that that is one of the best vanillas i think i've ever tried it's mm-hmm. it's fucking amazing and what the hell did i do with it last night because i tried it and then i was like well shit I, and i added something else to it and i can't remember it's been kind of a shit show protein wise mm-hmm. in this house lately um i have a lot of protein yeah same here that's why we uh hooked you up with a bunch just to you know spread some of the wealth around i appreciate that yeah man happy, yeah, man. happy um, to do it yeah, it was, and I, I, I didn't, uh, no crash from the assassin. Well, that's good. I've been we'll running, see if I uh, eat. we'll see if I remember to eat today. That was always my thing with DMA. I was like, wait, yeah. did I eat today? <laughs> yeah, I, I, but I mean, that's, I get that way with just basically any kind of stimulants, even if it's just like a pre-workout with caffeine in it. Mm-hmm. I'm that way regardless, or I would just have one cup of coffee in the morning. I could go basically until like four o'clock in the afternoon without even yep. craving food, um, and I've been running overtime, the new version with the new pep in it from you know Apollo, okay. and uh, I've I've been uh, uses my third day in a row using it. Uh, and yeah, man, it's it's awesome. I love it. So I mean, we're gonna be filming a full review here coming up soon, um, unless my channel gets you know blacklisted or something, with for reasons that you and I discussed off air. Um, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, we know if we're still if we're still on for next week. Yeah. Well, it's the, funny you bring up overtime too. So. I guess, so full disclosure, you know, people always ask me, they're like, because another package that I got this week from a good friend of ours, mm-hmm. from Nick over at Rage Nutrition. Yeah. Um, so people are like, oh, Justin, you taking this time for like, you know, take a stim break and stuff? And I was like, well, a little. Yeah. But this week, so Sunday, Sunday I used the new Assassin. Mm-hmm. And then Monday and Tuesday I used samples of the new Immortal from rage yeah yesterday i took a day off but i still used a full dose of overtime and then today i used the dma assassin so i <laughs> your receptors are fried i'm fine <laughs> so i think tomorrow i'm gonna have to chill out a little bit but um so nick you know he it's interesting because <clears throat> you know the last version of did you try last version of immortal uh, I, I do not believe so it's um it was pretty aggressive. It was a uh, really, really good formula. Crazy energy. I still have some a little bit. Maybe I'll, I should send you some. Um, talk about a bad flavor. A flavor, a flavor, a bad. But um, so he's been working on a new version for for a while now. He doesn't use anything, no DMHA or nothing like that. Right. Even his last version, he didn't use that stuff. He He's not a big fan. But I know he was going for a more, like a broader appealing pre-workout you know not like a total um i don't want to say sellout but not like a total like rebrand where we're going oh like we're going to get rid of everything hardcore and just go you know general you know population kind of thing but he has done something pretty damn good with that pre-workout um the pumps on it are fucking absurd really yes um i know we can't share the formula just yet but when you see it um it's a super expensive formula. You can definitely tell that. But, uh, dude, the pumps on this pre-workout are just Solid. mind-blowing. So I, I got like to use it. that on on uh, it was a Monday and Tuesday. Took samples of that. I still have one sample left. He did a good job with the flavors. But um, it's sort of like in – I was comparing it to Core Fury in a few ways. But it's, it's like, similar in that it does a lot of things really, really well. Mm-hmm. There's also, like, kind of different <clears> – it's got, like, a little more, like – punch than core fury core fury is very like 
it's it's still a lot of stems. It's very like gradual, subtle, really good energy. Mm -hmm. Um, his is a little more aggressive, but it's not, you know, it's not assassin aggressive. Right. Um, not he's got like a different, um, you know, core fury has like CDP coin and pregnenolone in it, and you kind of get like a little bit of a, uh, I don't want to say a little bit, but you get a really good like cognitive sort of energy. Mm -hmm. His, I don't think there's really anything in there for that but he has a plans for another product okay um but his core fury pumps are insane and his might have, i think they might even be better than core fury's the pumps are just pumps are just mind-blowing for for not stacking anything and yeah not doing anything it's just just, just nuts so he did, he did a really good job cool very got cool. one more of those to use and even though I say I'll take a day off tomorrow, maybe low stem, I'll probably use that. So, excellent. What is? No, I should say. Do you know how much caffeine's in it? On in Immortal? Uh, no, can't remember. He okay. did send me the. He sent me the. The facts. Yeah, actually, I can look real quick. I know he'll be. He won't mind if I share that. Nah, it's just the caffeine. So, and it's free publicity for him. Did a good job, man. People are really gonna like it. Which that'll bring up that'll bring us to our next talking point before we start really getting into new products and stuff like that. Is that uh, you know I consider you my my partner in this podcast, you know, um, and we I was approached by a company, a, a well known mm -hmm. internet retailer, to possibly consider doing some sponsored ads on the show. You know, everybody's kind of hurting right now with the economy, and so some of the some of these retailers maybe want to get some more traction shown their way. And I've been very weary about doing any kind of sponsored ads. You know, we've been approached about it before, and I, I don't want us to come across as in the tank for any brands. I mean, well, we obviously have our personal favorites that we like because basically we have either relationship, personal relationships, or working relationships with them. So we, we have those. But I've always been weary about accepting money directly on the podcast platform just because I, I don't want us to, you know, become conflicted. And so. Mm. I'll, since I consider you a partner and all this, and you've been incredibly helpful in getting the podcast, you know, up and running and all of that. Um, what are your thoughts on doing the, uh, if we were to start doing ads, sponsored ads, what are your, just your general vibes on it from if we did retailers and not brands? And this is for all the listeners out there too. Send us an email or an uh, instant message or anything like that, or a text if you have one of our phone numbers and let us know what you think. Um, if we were to run, you know, like a 30 or a 60 second spot, in the podcast, say like in the middle or the end of the episode, saying, hey, you know, you can get 15% off at XYZ Retailer with code supplement podcast or something like whatever we ever end up doing if we explore this. So what are your thoughts on it? Does it impugn the credibility of the podcast? Does it harm us? Does it harm us? Is it good? What, you know, what do you think? Yeah, because this is something that I've always sort of had these debates with, with bringing supplements new to market. You know, I, I just... I don't want to ever like get on a soapbox about the fact that for the the app we there's no advertisements within the app there's no right. um, anything like that because there's a double edged sword there so instead we charge the customers mm -hmm. so <clears throat> and I had this conversation with Ben from Price Plow the other day on a live we did together yeah. so Price Plow has basically sponsored content right? right and people talk shit about them for doing mm -hmm. it and then we do content that's not sponsored we charge customers and people talk shit about us for that so it's like <laughs> what the fuck are you gonna do you know it's a winless I mean? so, situation but i think um my thoughts if you do things there's two sets of people can do the same exact thing and i think one will come across as they're in the tank and another will come across as they're making a smart business decision mm -hmm. and i think that you and i have enough credibility where we can do that and it also is different too like it's not a brand. If it was a brand right. that all of a sudden they're saying, Hey, we want to pay for advertising time on your platform. <clears throat> yeah. And it was a brand we don't agree with, or, and then all of a sudden we find ourselves saying stuff about them just because that would, you know, obviously that's something that you yeah. and I would never do, but I'm all for, I mean, it's just the world we live in, man. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you, you find ways to monetize. I mean, it's business, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if you have something that you bring to the table that people find value in, well, then you should monetize it because yeah. then what else are you really doing it for? Just for, you know, I mean, I'm not rich, you're not rich. So right. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not like we are doing so. 
I know we talked about it and um, it's not something like we've set for sure we're going to do, but Correct. it's definitely something, I mean, I don't see why not, especially as long as it doesn't, I've definitely seen some podcasts and things like that where people start taking on ads and it's, it's a total shit show yeah. joke how it ends up. Right. And I think that there's a balance there that you and I can strike because I think we're both thinking the same thing. We're both like, you know, even like I'll take the supplement soup private group for the longest time, you know, mm-hmm. people are like, Hey, can we do like a, a brand new, even brands that, um, the supplement soup private group is very like a small family kind of thing. Yeah. And there's a lot of brands that, um, have contributed for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, Hey, how about doing like a giveaway, you know, say on the, on the private group. And even that for the longest time, I'm like, you know, I just don't want to go down that road. I don't want to do a giveaway. I don't want to do discount codes. I don't want to do any of that stuff. But yeah. after a while, I'm like, you know, there's really no, if done correctly, I don't think that there's any um, harm in it. So we've right. been in the, and the customers love it. You know, at, what I was realizing, yeah. I was like in my overprotectiveness of what's going on, I'm basically ensuring that, you know, I'm risking the health of what we're doing. Yeah. And, you know, maybe even like holding back from some of the customers who are going to get benefits from doing cool stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Just so I think like if you and I want to continue to do this podcast, I mean, it takes up, you know, it's it's not like it, I don't feel like it takes up a lot of time, but it right. does. It takes you. I mean, you spend a lot of time doing podcasts and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, the pod, the post production and uploading, converting, doing all that stuff. And getting right. Um, yeah. I mean, you should be compensated for your time. And uh, if people find it entertaining, then and it does help them, which I think we do. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. If if done correctly, like I said we'll see how it goes. Right. And the other thing and is to set up a possibly setting up a Patreon or something like that. I just I I I don't like sticking my hand out that way, and I don't want to feel people to feel obligated to do anything like that. And my issue with a lot of podcasts is that. They either insert ads like right in the middle of somebody talking to where if I'm in the middle of this question, boom, it Mm -hmm. cuts right there to an ad. And I just I immediately hit the the skip button on it. Or it's Mm -hmm. something like Joe Rogan's podcast where it's 10 minutes of ads before you even get to anything meaningful in there. And I just I don't know how he's making money from it because I'm sure I mean, well, obviously he makes a a ton of money because there's a a lot of high profile companies that are paying for advertising on there and he gets millions of downloads every time. Yeah, but I just. I'm not somebody that's going to sit there and listen to 10 minutes of ads. So I don't see how those companies are getting any returns. And that's, that's one thing I don't want this podcast to turn into, which is yet another reason why I've been wary of doing any kind of ads or sponsorships or anything, because then it just becomes a, you're constantly looking for some sponsor to get a cash grab and say, Hey, how can I jack up the rates for this? How much can I get this money? You know, them to pay me for this. So that's, it's, it's something that's very, very, I'm very tenuous about, but you know, if there's a way to monetize the podcast and I could, you know, free me up to do other avenues to where if I'm getting some kind of like passive income from the podcast, I, that'll give me efforts to where I can reserve, you know, maybe scale back some work in one area of what I do and direct it towards other efforts of, or projects that I kind of want to get rolling that I haven't had time to as of yet. Yep. hundred percent, man. No, I'm all for it. I know we'll talk more about it and we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah. It's a good thing, right? Because, yeah. you know, anytime a company sees the value in what you're bringing and they want to pay to advertise with you, I think that that's a good sign that what you're doing is, is a good thing. And, yeah. you know, if, if it doesn't work or if it's not, doesn't fit, then we just go back to what we're doing right now and it's right. all good. So Yeah, yeah and you brought we'll up see. a point the other day when I first talked to you about it a couple of days ago and I had a conversation with one other person about this. And they said it, it brings legitimacy to the podcast. You know, if somebody's willing to pay to be advertised on your platform, it, it shows that just basically what you said, that what you're doing is right and good and, you know, in the in best intentions for the industry or, you know, what the people respect what you're doing. So, Yep, 100%, man. I think that people people just get it at this point that it's just part of the deal. And, you know, and that's why I've never I, – I never try to use that as, yes – So the app and like I said, everything, there's no, there's no, um, you know, sponsors or ads or anything like that. But it's not like I don't say that in in an effort to go, well, we're better than everybody else. It's just that's what we decided to do with that. It's like, so if you think that that's cool, then you can decide whether that's cool or not. Um, So it's like, I'm all for it, man. I, uh, yeah. I, I'm done. I will say this too. Like I spent a lot of years building supplements, noob, like just um, 
without releasing anything. I spent a lot of unpaid hours yeah. um, doing a lot of things. And, you know, uh, that's, yeah. that's, there's no nobility really in that. It's like, that mm-hmm. was, that was what needed to be done. But at the same time, if you do something that's useful for people and you can monetize that, I think I'm all for it, man. Anybody yeah. can out there, it's like, do your thing. And if people don't like it, then go do something else. You right. Know I mean? So I'm all for it. Okay. All right, man. Well, then let's see. Let's get on to uh, the next stuff. Do we want to go over some Stack 3D products? Do you want to uh, discuss Citropy? Because that was a, a topic that it's in the new Bomar pre-workout. And uh, I believe somebody also mentioned it on your live that you were doing yesterday. So do you want to discuss some Stack 3D products right now? Or do you want to uh, get into some ingredient nerdness? Why don't we... Um, why don't we do Citra Peak next week? Because I think so. I'm getting Sarah sent me the pre workout. I think it's getting here tomorrow. Okay. So then maybe I can use it a couple of times, and then we can yeah. get sort of we can get that discussion sort of together with some first hand usage also with the data. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be really good. Um, and I guess also as if you can run a comparison to, I know you're not going to find an exact pre workout that is the exact same as the Bomar pre minus Citra Peak, but if you can find something remarkably close or reasonably close to it just mm-hmm. so you can get a comparison to see hey is maybe the Citra Peak amplifying it that much more or is it a you know a null effect or anything like that so yeah because I so I know someone that got it yesterday and used it and she's she likes her stimulants so mm-hmm. she uh she loves the last Bomar pre-workout uses yeah. all the time and she said it was kind of like what you and I sort of suspected from the formula they added a little bit of theanine, but there's a lot of tryptophan in there. And I was like, well, to me, this seems like it's going to play out where it's more gradual. It's, you know, sustained yeah. energy, which I think is kind of the the vibe that a lot of companies are going for these days. And um, so this person that used it yesterday was sort of describing it and kind of gave that, that, that feedback to it that it was, you know, she said like when she was done, you know, sometimes with heavier stimulants, you feel very wiped out at the end of your workout. Yeah. And she said that she didn't have any of that. Um, There's tryptophan was, or tyrosine in there? It's tryptophan, like 750 milligrams of tryptophan. That's weird because so that's one of the reasons why you're supposed to supplementing with BCAAs is to prevent the uptake of uh, tryptophan. tryptophan into the brain <laughs> to prevent fatigue. So that's why I'm trying to figure out why would you put tryptophan in a pre-workout? I mean, I guess it it will boost serotonin levels but uh, that's that, i don't know if i want that in my pre-workout that's interesting let me see if i can find uh is the profiles <clears throat> on stacked yeah it's um yeah there's 750 milligrams of tryptophan in two scoops and 125 theanine so and there's 250 caffeine and 125 theanine and 750 of tryptophan so Hmm. i was like huh because i get like exactly what you're saying there's a couple different ways i think that that could play out yeah and obviously not for i mean they're going to test this out and they're going to try it out right yeah and it's it's not like you're going to take it and next thing you know you're falling asleep in the gym yeah it's just there's that really odd balance when you start using things like this Mm -hmm. that if your goal is to sort of give you that balanced, sustained mental focus, energy kind of thing with no sort of crashes, it gets very technical um, in there. And so a lot of testing is usually necessary with it. So I don't know, 750 milligrams of tryptophan, a lot of tryptophan. Yeah, it is. And it's, it's interesting. It's a, it's a. I'm also more of a dopamine kind of guy. Uh, yeah. But we'll see. So, so there's... There's um, I get it tomorrow, so I'll try. Uh, I'll try if I don't get it early enough tomorrow. I'll try it this weekend for sure, and yeah, just sort of circle back because there's some cool things about it. Um, the pumps look like they'd be really good. Mm-hmm. Um, alpha yohimbine, lower dose alpha yohimbine, so that's cool. Big dose of citrulline because I think the last mm-hmm. one they had citrulline malate at six grams, and now they I have so, yeah. six of. Plus they up the tyrosine. 1.5 grams of tyrosine, I like that, mm-hmm. alpha GPC. So, and then also, so <clears throat> the caffeine is from guarana, but it's also from dicaffeine malate. So, mm-hmm. 
this to me is just a very smooth kind smooth, of energy. Yeah, energy. So yeah, the uh, the only reason I'm just and this just came to me and I remember I wrote an article on this I don't know how long ago it might have been over two years now but it was basically going into like the dopamine and serotonin balance that this mm -hmm. is the reason I think balancing it is that if you over supplement with one agonist it can deplete the other one so I think maybe by supplementing with both tyrosine and tryptophan you're trying to keep a little bit more even balance instead of just supercharging one of those neurotransmitter systems you're going to end up depleting the other one there's been research that goes into you how you can get this kind of a uh, depletion of one of those which just exacerbates feelings of you know uh depression anxiety all of that kind of stuff so i think maybe by doing this you know it's uh balancing it might be that that could that would be one of the the valid reasons i could see for including it in the formula <clears throat> well and that's kind of the thing too there's some data about when you supplement with taurine you you deplete tyrosine as well so yeah. sometimes you have to i've seen some formulas like you're adding more tyrosine to the formula and then you have the tryptophan. So, yeah, it, it, we'll see. See how it yeah. plays out, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, It'll be interesting. I'd, I, would, I would very much like to try this and see how, uh, see how it feels, just given that it's got theanine and tryptophan in it. Is it I was also pop Yeah, enough? I was also told the blackberry flavor is mind-blowingly good. That's good. That's a good so, thing. That's the one I'm getting tomorrow. So big shout-out to Sarah for sending it over. I appreciate that. Sweet. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it go, how it goes. And yeah, let's we'll, we'll talk about that next week because Citra Peak's pretty cool. And uh, figure then we can also add in uh, some firsthand experience. Yeah, we'll do. A, we'll save the the Citra, Citra Peak deep dive for next week. Then let's do that. I also today you probably didn't catch it because you know you're, you're a busy guy, but um, I did an Instagram live with. Uh, with Dana from Devotion Nutrition. Uh -huh. Oh, she, I, yeah. I remember you telling me about her a couple weeks ago. I need to reach out to them. Let me make another note for me. She's pretty cool, man. She's got a good story. Um, she was telling me, you know, we were talking about the protein. Yeah. And I, it, it was actually worked out perfect because, you know, their protein is like 80% isolate and 20% casein. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, they, they spent a long time trying to get that the balance right. She, I mean, she's, she told me she's like the first uh, idea for this came started in like 2006. Yeah. And so it's gone through all these different uh, things. It's a really, it was a really cool story. We had a great conversation for like an hour and she said that um, uh, it was nice because I could sort of help out, you know, mm -hmm. there's like sucralose is in it. And then there's a lot of questions like from women about, you know, and I, I was beating that drum of don't give me a shit about isolate being superior to everything. I got to get on my soapbox about that. Yeah. And then I, I got to sort of talk to people about sucralose. So we had a really good back and forth dialogue where, yeah, you know, you sort of go on there and a brand, of course, is going to talk about how great their stuff is. And she's yeah. very passionate and really believes in what they're doing, which I, I think is a great idea. Mm -hmm. But then also it was nice. I could kind of chime in there, too, with hey, let's get rid of some of these myths that have been thrown down your throat about, you know, yeah. what different proteins do what, artificial flavors and all this other stuff. So it was good. We had a really good um, conversation. She's you would, you would definitely enjoy having her on the podcast. She's got a really good story to tell. And she's very transparent, very passionate about what she does. So it was good. Excellent. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting that you say it's 80 way to 20 casing because that's the, the inverse of what the naturally occurring ratio <coughs> is in milk. So that's, that's kind of cool. Yeah, because she said that um, she said when it came to like feedback and things like that, she said she wanted to add more casein to it. She said, but when they would get certain feedback, it was just too thick for most people, and people weren't really enjoying it and stuff like that. She said the she said they tried a, a bunch of different ratios, and she said they landed on the eighty twenty. Um, she said that that sort of fit who she was marketing to, and you know mm -hmm. the people, the the testing groups that they had and stuff like that yeah. too, which is. It kind of ties into what Pretty and I talked about in our consulting program a lot of times. It's like a lot of this is okay. Is there some the ratios that are better? And it's like, well, better for what? Does your does your formulas and things like that match your target customer? Also, is a big Correct. deal. Yeah. And um, so she said that uh, they've been working on this stuff for a long time. And I'm like, it's it's amazing how you know, you, you think. You see these ideas it's it's an innovative idea yeah but then you have to get out there and you know 
show people why it's innovative. Right. And then we started talking about amino spiking um, on the podcast, which or on the, the live, which was good because mm-hmm. then I got to talk to people about, you know, what proteins, what to look out for in protein and why right. hers is, is um, legit and stuff like that. So it was cool, man. We got to combine a little fun, a little science, a little uh, myth busting all at the same time. We had a really good time. Sweet. Have you ever thought, oh, well, I guess, uh, you, is there any way to save those and catalog them or something like that to where you could upload them to the Supplements New uh, user group? <clears throat> yeah, I've done it before. Um, like some of, I did a live with Ben from mm-hmm. Morphogen. It's on the group uh, somewhere. I did a couple with Chris Waldrum. They're on the group somewhere. Yeah, I've seen the, the Chris, I've seen Chris's one before. Yeah, the, um, it, the last couple times I tried to do it, it, they, it didn't work. Um, it's a pain in the ass, but it is, it is doable. She actually said that, um, Dana told me she was going to download it, um, and try and share it with us. That way we could share it with, with other people. And I would, uh, I would definitely put it on a private group. Excellent. Yep. Um, so there was that. And then, so Sarah sent me that pre-workout tomorrow. Oh, and then I got, um, I got a package in the mail from Snack House. Snack House. I don't think I'm familiar with them. So Snack House is it's Sean uh, Torbati from yeah, Ambrosia right. and High Performance Nutrition. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, I can't remember his other name because I knew Sean already, and Sean reached out to me. Um, but yeah. then there's a, another person that he's um, in business with when it comes to this. But they sent me a a little care package, a big, it was a big, huge bag of these chocolate puffs, Mm -hmm. protein puffs that they have. Like cocoa puffs or almost? Yeah. Like it's very, um, pro puffs. Like if you ever had pro puffs. No, I've not. I don't think so. So let's see here. I'm on the website right now. The chocolate is slamming good. (laughs) Like you would think, okay, chocolate. Well, of course it's, it's going to be good. Right. You know, it's how do you really, you know, it is really good. Like it was better than I thought. They yeah. have the ingredients in it are so it's whey protein concentrate, micellar casein, cocoa, whey protein isolate, and then it gets into the flavorings and stuff like that. Mm. And um, so they sent me this. They sent me the nacho cheese ones, which I have not tried yet. And they sent me the it's a wild berry wild berry cheesecake. Wow. Yeah, and it's it, it's good. It's kind of one of those things, you know, when you, you get these puffs, you can only really flavor the outside of it. Yeah. You know, because the inside's the, you know, the protein, basically. Right. Um, but the cheesecake puffs ones were really good. But the chocolate ones were, I mean, even with knowing that, okay, you're going to have some plainness on the inside, probably, they mm-hmm. do the flavors are nuts. So, um, but the reason why I don't buy stuff like this all the time is because I... The big bag is like seven servings. I, I could have ate the whole fucking thing last <laughs> night, like just in, in within five minutes. So, um, but a huge shout out to them. Sean has been one of my favorite people that I've met um, in this industry. Sean is a good guy. Um, you know, he's got his hands in uh, some really cool things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, big shout out to, to Sean and the team over at Snack House for hooking me up because uh, I definitely enjoyed it. Good deal. I think it's 15 grams of protein in there. It's pretty, the macros are good. Macros are really good. But let's see. I can't exactly make out the label. Oh, well, anyway, go look up Snack House, snack house Protein. <laughs> do they do, what else do they do there? So that's one thing. That's a brand we've actually never covered on here. Pro Puffs. Okay. What else do they have? Or is that all? Is that? Yeah, I think they're. It's relatively new. They just launched yeah. into. Um, they got some pretty cool flavors. Nacho uh, cheese puffs. Yes, please. Yeah, that's another one that I have. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Weird. Barbecue. Yeah. See, 
I could do things, but you remember the old 3D nachos, nacho, uh, 3D Doritos that they had, yeah, you know, back, I, I guess we were probably teenagers when those came out, I guess. Um, I, I did not like those. They, they were weird. It's, they tried to replicate it, but maybe, I don't know if it was like a mind fuck or a texture thing or something, mm-hmm. but the flavor was different than what it was for the actual, if you took a regular Dorito chip and then you took a 3D Dorito, and the 3D Dorito did not taste like anything at all. It was it was weird, like a, almost like a stale Dorito. Yeah, well, I think just to take a Dorito, something that's like an institution, and then mess with it is a little yeah. jarring. So, right. yeah, I do remember those, and I don't remember, like, I remember maybe trying them, like, once, and I sort of moved on. Yeah. I don't think the, uh, the Cool Ranch ones weren't too bad, but the... The, the regular nacho cheese flavor was not not at all enjoyable. Let That's me also, I bought these, um, you ever had the Wicked Cups jerky? I, I have not. Now. I'm not a big jerky person. I mean, I eat jerky. I just, I don't eat it unless, you know, Sandy and I are driving on a road trip somewhere and we stop at a gas station to get some. Dude, this orange teriyaki, yeah. Wicked Cups jerky is nuts. It is so good. That's why it's sitting right next to me. I can't help myself. <laughs> is it better than the uh, the America sticks? Or is it different? Um, just totally different. Okay. Um, I think they do have sticks on. The Wicked Cuts one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I can't imagine someone not liking the jerky or the America beef sticks. Yeah. So I think other than that, Other than that, I didn't get anything else. Because we already talked about core last week, right? I got a huge shipment from yep. core. Yeah. I still I can't really, I can't talk about the pump for them formula until tomorrow. Mm, I think that's it. Okay. Well, this doesn't get released until tomorrow, so technically we could mm, talk true. about it. Mm, if you okay. if you want to, if you if you don't, I want you I don't want you to violate any morals or anything like that or things that you've mentioned. Or promises yeah. you may have made. People will know what it is. It's all good. Um, yeah, I think other than that, uh, that's about it for the week. Okay. Oh, wait. Did I? Yeah, I already talked about the outfit, the cortisol manager. I know we had talked about like it as it was getting ready to be released, but I actually yeah. had been using it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I talked about that last week or not. Give us a recap anyway, because you've had it for a few more days now to run. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so the outfit is it's 500 milligrams of serenade, phosphatidylserine. Okay. It's 300 rhodiola, 50 canna, and then 50 astrogen. And uh, it's effective, man. It's um, it's the ice cream sandwich flavor. That's what I did. Okay, so last night when I was saying earlier that I tried some of that Titan mm-hmm. way, the vanilla. Yeah. I drank some of it and it was awesome. And then I threw this in with it. So it was like the vanilla and then the ice cream sandwich. It was fucking crazy good. It was crazy good. But um, the unphase is, is a cool one. Um, he's also working on something. I won't divulge the details, but he's working on something that you're going to be very interested in. And, I, would, uh, I would guess that's a, that might be a new tropic or something. If I had to guess, I would um, say that it, it might be in that vein. You know, you would think that. He already has a new tropic, actually. Um, hmm. yeah, I'll send you, over, send you over a little something. Okay. Corey, Corey's a good dude, but he said, he's like, hey, man, I need to, like, you're interested in helping me test out this product? I'll show you. We can move on. I'll send you the picture here, and okay. you'll, oh. you'll enjoy it. All right. That's it. Cool product though, uh, unfazed. We did a giveaway on the group I think last week, and uh, the person that won it just started taking it too, and mm-hmm. says he really likes it. Sweet. Have you? Uh, so I just opened up Stack. Have you noticed that Muscle Farm has been releasing more and more functional foods lately? And I know like they they were a a bigger brand a couple years ago compared to you know the fallout they had with all the legal snafus and and all of that nonsense. But have you noticed that they started a uh, shifting a little bit more and adopting the optimum track that optimum did a couple years ago when they started releasing all of the protein almonds the protein wafers the protein cake bites the protein bars and all of that stuff and now it's <clears throat> muscle farms got crisps they've got a crisp bar i think they have they've always had the combat bars but they've got two or three other bars now too to add to the family so i guess 
when you're done making shitty supplements, you start to make functional foods? Well, and I think that this is just, I mean, I don't know. I just, muscle farm is whatever. It just, if you're optimum nutrition, I get it, right? Yeah. You, you went and now, I mean, you you did something that no one else had done. Right. And this just, when, when I see stuff like this, this follow the leader stuff, like way after the fact, it's mm-hmm. just, to me, it's just um, desperate. Yeah, well, and they've got it right on across the top of the bag or the bottom of the bag, gluten-free and keto-friendly. There you go. There's two big buzzwords to get everybody uh, all hot and bothered. I just can't fucking stand them. Yeah. That goes way back, though, way back. Yeah. Personal. I mean, I just, they're just um, one of those companies. It's like, so, you know, people talk shit about these some of these big brands, you know, for selling out or whatever it is you want to say, which I totally support. Mm-hmm. Um, I get it, but when you see – the evolution of like a cellucor or a uh, optimum nutrition they're 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 doing new things in a lot of ways like they're so they've shifted totally they're doing some cool stuff um even like cellucor you know i i joke about you know but I, I like what they do they're even taking the energy drink category and they're i think they're improving on it a little mm-hmm. bit better yeah but when you just see these brands that just are trying to copy off those brands it just looks yeah it just looks desperate so agreed <clears throat> uh Not the guys at obvi have released they you know they do a lot of flavored collagen stuff and you've mm-hmm. been uh you said it's very delicious tasting and next week we're gonna try and uh set up an interview with ranak over there and if you're free we can uh you can hop on the call since you've had a few more interactions with him than i have and we, we can do a, He's a good round dude. table yeah, he's a really, really good dude. Um, they, yeah, they've been part of the private group for for a long time. Um, yeah. yeah, he showed me this this product um, maybe a little while back. I was like, that's cool because there's the they have it's a. I was wondering when this was going to happen too. When you would start seeing a blend of collagen mm-hmm. sources, and they're they're doing that here. So it's um. Yeah, this is the collagen burn you're talking about, right? Yeah, collagenic burn from Obvi. And for the uh, the listeners out there, and this is something I'm gonna I'm gonna read through the profile, and then I want to get your feedback because I noticed something else during uh, Sarah's uh, live Q and A last night that she did um, when she was talking about their collagen protein. So in the the Obvi collagenic burn, it's four capsules for a serving, thirty servings per container. Uh, you've got vitamin B12, biotin, magnesium, and chromium in there for starters. Then you've got 1,000 milligrams of a multi-collagen matrix of types 1, 2, 3, 5, and 10. Uh, made of hydrolyzed bovine collagen peptides, beef hydrolyzed bovine bone broth collagen, hydrolyzed fish gelatin, fish collagen peptides, chicken bone broth collagen, and eggshell membrane. Then you get into the, the fat loss of the burn ingredients of 400 milligrams of green tea extract, 150 of CLA as the patented InnoBio form, 130 mm-hmm. of cayenne pepper extract, 120 of caffeine, 100 of raspberry ketone, 50 of Garcinia cambogia, and 5 of black pepper extract. So mm-hmm. um, to, to put it out there, I mean, it, the caffeine, yeah, the green tea, sure, uh, collagen, yeah. The, the rest of them, CLA, I wrote a, an article two years ago saying that CLA is, I I would uh, exercise a lot of caution with using CLA because there's more negative data on it than there is positive in regards to cardiovascular health in particular. Um, Yeah. Raspberry ketones, Garcinia cambogia, they might be effective, but I think that the doses probably need to be a little bit higher. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. So I want to check out this, you know, bio because, yeah, same thing. CLA is sort of, I've always been indifferent towards, so when you look at a product like this, it's like, okay, you're, you're going to have some energy, some, you know, there's cayenne pepper and things like that. But really this is a collagen product with like a little bit of fat loss stuff and energy and kind of fat loss. It's not like it's a, I wouldn't really call it a fat. This is sort of a bit of an outdated sort of approach to fat burning. But you know what? I'll say this too. You know, when you take a look at the people that buy from Avi, and I don't want to say because it's very careful how I want to word this, um, even the fact that I respect, I, I really like what they do. 
because when you use certain ingredients like raspberry ketones or Garcinia, um, CLA, these are like familiar ingredients right. to people, especially like women. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you start to include like fat burning ingredients, people get very intimidated. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm guessing they wouldn't want to, this would be a good question for him, I guess they wouldn't want to alienate, you know, certain people. And so is it, is it better to leave certain ingredients out altogether? Like, would it be better to leave raspberry ketones out, you know? Yeah. But is it hurting anything? No. No. Is the, is the formula a proprietary blend of, no. of nothing? No. Um, it's, I really like the collagen matrix. So yeah. you're buying it for collagen, some green tea, cayenne pepper, and caffeine for me, which I still think is, I think that's cool. Mm-hmm. I think nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I don't know. There's some things that if you really, if I wanted to nitpick, but at the same time, I'm really kind of curious to see the, I don't, because that's kind of the point of it too, is I don't want to, overshadow the fact of them doing something i think that's cool with the collagen matrix by bitching about raspberry ketones you know what i mean because it's kind of like well you're kind of like missing the point i guess but at the same time bringing up valid so i think you get what i mean but so what we usually see in collagen is the um the bovine collagen peptides Mm -hmm. but what we know is like so the fish collagen is they're smaller, maybe easier to digest, but they're also higher, like in the type two collagen, I think. And then, yeah. um, but much more expensive. That's where we don't see marine collagen very much. Right. Um, so that's kind of cool. I mean, obviously it's proprietary, but <clears throat> I think it's neat. I've been waiting to see if there was going to be a, cause collagen is so popular. And I think yeah. it seems to me like obviously doing really well their products are really popular and their marketing is really cool and they came up with that kids complete protein that i thought Mm -hmm. was awesome yeah so yeah i think there's there's some things where i'm like well all right i could do without in here but it's also a really cool um idea yeah um one thing i want to see that because i also noted this this uh with the bomar stuff is that with collagen supplementation a, a lot of the research has shown that collagen supplements can be effective but they're uh, effectiveness is enhanced to a, by a fairly significant way when it's combined with vitamin C. So I'm wondering why this one doesn't contain it or uh, the Bomar one did. Now, I mean, obviously, <clears throat> most people will get enough vitamin C in their diets, but and it's not an expensive ingredient. So what's you know the harm in throwing in another you know 100 milligrams or 250 right. milligrams of vitamin C in here? Yep. No, I'm with you. Um, I don't know. Good question. Yeah. I think that I think that what I and let me say this too about what I like about this. Mm-hmm. So all we're seeing for the most part, we know the collagen is popular. This is like a step, I think, in the right direction of let's keep going right. with collagen because, you know, what you're seeing now is collagen super popular. So everyone's just coming up with their own collagen product, but it's all it is is hydrolyzed um, bovine collagen it's the same thing right? over and over and over and over again. You keep looking at these and that's fine. That's totally cool. But that's, you know, so this is sort of like, okay, let's take it up a notch. And I think that's too why I'm kind of hesitant to be like, okay, does there need to be 50 milligrams of carcinian? No. But I also don't want to miss the fact that this is um, pushing us outside the box just a little bit. Right. Because I, I like the... I like the multiple collagen uh, source thing. So if people, if other companies can see this and go, hey, I can improve on this if it's popular. Mm-hmm. Um, I think because I really like, I like collagen. I like the, um, I like the idea behind it. I think it's right. cool. So I want to see, I don't want to see us get super lazy in this industry where now everyone just comes up with a, a, a hydrolyzed, you know, bovine collagen and then just slaps different marketing right. on it. So that's what I think is kind of cool. What they're doing is, Rather than just sticking with their, you know, base product that has really cool marketing, mm-hmm. they're trying to do some other things with it too. Yeah. I think this is kind of like, to me, this seems like a testing product. Like, if See if there's a market if, for it or something. Yeah. And if it's, you know, because are people going to care that there's multiple collagen sources? Is it worth the extra money? Because it's definitely right. going to be more expensive than just regular ones. So. While there's things that I can nitpick about this, I also like the effort, and I think that, like I said, this is probably like let's let's test out and see how this goes, and maybe then, yeah. if it works, we can improve on it a little bit. It still leaves you some room to do some other things. 
Yeah, and I guess it, it's almost in the vein of like we the first few times we saw the the thermogenic pre workouts, or I mean, you, I guess you'd call them <clears throat> fasted cardio pre workouts, however you want to slant it, whatever that their application is. That's the way they usually market is that take this for fasted cardio or take it, you know, if you want to get an extra thermic effect when you're working out. Um, so maybe this is kind of going in that part two, seeing if you can create some kind of hybrid category to differentiate yourself. So because you know it's the thermo pre workout category is exploded now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I like it. So we'll see. Uh, that'll be cool, though. Um, I'll look forward to your podcast with him. He's a super nice guy. Jeez. Yeah. And they're, um, they've actually been one of the brands that have used the Supplements Noob Group um, to help. You know, there's a lot of people that they don't want to talk about their ideas because of competition, things like that. They don't want to put right. it out there. But they've been very like, hey, what do you guys think about this? Um, what do you think about this idea? And getting everybody over there involved, which I think is really fun. Like, yeah. I love to see it, so. Yeah, buddy. I'm a little biased towards them. I, I do. I really like what they do, so maybe that's why I'm. But I just don't think, I, like I said, I don't want to see, I don't want to, like, knock something because it has Garcini in it when I think there's a bigger point to the product, I yeah. guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and that's it's good insight, and you, you bring in a different perspective to it, and sometimes we can get mired down in the details too much, but you know, you're, you're pretty good at, at seeing some of the other avenues or reasons why companies may be doing certain things. I try to be positive, man. I yeah. try to be, yeah. it's easy to be negative, right? Um, it, it very much is. I'm not seeing, I'm seeing this mile blocks uh, it says Lean Muscle Builder Contra 2.0 is coming soon with an intriguing twist, but I'm not seeing what the twist is. No, there's nothing yet. Um, there's a couple of immune support formulas that have been released. I don't know if we really want to get into those or not. It's up to you. I mean, Gaspari's got one coming out calling Proven Immunity. I'm, I, 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 I worry a little bit about putting Proven on the label because that seems like it just opens you up to a bunch of legal issues with the FDA, especially now. Yeah, and that, so I was talking to the guys at um, Alpha Lion about this. Uh, yeah, and their armor, their new immune supplement. Armor. So this is taking the the EpiCore that we had talked about um, last week or the week before Nutribiosum. I mean, the EpiCore. Yeah, EpiCore has got a lot of studies um, behind it, and so they're sort of taking that, adding good dose of elderberry, echinacea, astaxanthin, spectra, vitamin C, and zinc. Pretty cool. I mean, I know everything, the conversations behind immune supplements is getting kind of weird. Like, yeah. rightfully so, a lot of people are really like pissed at some companies that are suddenly turning towards health. But at the same time, I made this comment to someone the other day. They said, you know, what do you think about this rush to immune supplements? And I said, there's part of me where I go, I see certain companies <clears throat> that have no interest in making health products in the past, make an immune supplement now and part of me goes part of me kind of winces a little bit but then at the same time i if you think about it maybe this is a good thing you know yeah some of these companies um have a lot of resources and if we can customers always dictate the flow in the supplement industry correct always and i was like and i told someone this here day i said this should show you how much power we actually have in the industry as consumers if we want something they'll make it and if we continue to educate ourselves learn about these processes learn where we can do better mm -hmm. companies will um you know they'll bend yeah and they'll start making stuff and Correct. so if we can sort of mitigate this whole overreaction you know where maybe we've overreacted to the immune supplements mm -hmm. But we'll come back to center at some point once this sort of blows over. And I think people will, they're just discovering some of these supplements now. They're like, wow, some of this stuff actually really can help. So hopefully, you know, there's an overreaction. So I don't want to, I don't want to just sit there and like get out there and go, oh, well, they shouldn't be making an immune supplement because they've never given a fuck about it. I don't think that that's right either. It's like yeah. we can all learn. You know, a lot of companies just make what people want to buy. And if we yes. weren't asking for immune system supplements, then why would you make them? <laughs> you Correct. Yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. I don't know. Kind of, I like to see, I like to see, it was kind of like the general health uh, discussion I was probably having maybe like a year or two ago. I said, I really want to see some of these sports nutrition brands 
throw their hat in the ring when it comes to general health because they have more knowledge and more resources than some of these, you know, say Amazon type brands. I was like, I think we can really see some cool stuff. And I think that we are. So as we're seeing more cool stuff, I don't want to also sit there and then go, well, it's not the right companies that are doing cool stuff. I think that's kind of dumb. I would agree, man. 100% with that. So what is on tap for the weekend for you? Oh, man, I don't know. I, I have a hard time even remembering what day it is anymore. I just know that when we get together, it's probably Thursday. Yeah, so. most of the time it, it usually is unless something else pops up. Well, we didn't. We have to. Um, I got to find. So tomorrow I'm doing uh, Instagram Live with Chris Waldrum. Mm-hmm. Um, him and I are going to make that a weekly thing now. He's <laughs> Chris is he's awesome. So. Yes, he is. We've been talking about that for a long time about just let's just do like a weekly thing and talk about all the crazy shit that we talk about in our text messages. <laughs> so that should be fun. And then I think um, so my wife and I, we've been playing the Uncharted series for the PlayStation 4. OK. All right. Yeah. Um, Uncharted is sort of like, a, you know, you saw the National Treasure movies. Yes, I did. Sandy actually just rewatched the first one uh, last week. So it's very much like that, oh, way more action mm-hmm. um, involved, a lot more killing and stuff like that. But so we we basically played all four of the Uncharted games over the last few weeks <laughs> and uh, finally beat the last one, the final one, the other night. So we got to find something new to play. Just go back she and just bring out the old Final Fantasy games, man. That'll keep you occupied for a good 40 plus hours. I do have... Um, that I think we talked about it before, the Nintendo emulator. Yep. Yep. Um, it's just the memory stick you plug in your TV. Right. And it has the original Final Fantasy on there. There you go. That would keep me busy for a while. It would. It should, at least. Is it the regular Nintendo or the Super Nintendo? Or both? It's regular, regular Nintendo. Regular Nintendo. Okay. Um, is there Super Nintendo games on there? I think there is Super Nintendo games on there. There's like 700 games, I think. Okay. So I haven't even gone through all of it yet. But gotcha. That was one thing. I went back and played the original Legend of Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, that game's hard. Uh, yeah, it is. I think the <sighs> second one's... Shit. I think the, the Legend of Zelda 2 is even My God. harder, if I remember. But, I mean, it's been 20-plus years since I played that game. Well, and the controls are, like, so unresponsive. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're trying. You're used to the joystick, like, on a yep. PlayStation 4 and Xbox and everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's just not like that anymore. Yeah. Uh, last, before we go, there is one. I just scrolled through a bunch of the pages of uh, Stacked. Before we go, uh, we would be remiss if we did not talk about our boys, Formula Reveal, Mark Burton at Iron Brothers. They finally mm-hmm. they've been teasing the new design. They're doing the rebrand. Um, and they just dropped the formula uh, a couple of days early at the, at the start of this week. So oh, he's, been, he's been working on this one for a long time. Yeah, the Canadian crusher. Well, I know that was a big thing with him, and that's something that people would probably be interested to know. When when you're going to do things in, in Canada, you got to have a whole new set of problems to deal with. Yeah, um, you got to start game planning stuff like six months out because the uh, yeah the NPN <clears throat> process is is a, a mind fuck. And if you want more information on that, go listen to the uh, the previous interview I did with uh, Mark. But we've got, uh, for the listeners out there, it'll be a, a 40-20 serve, so the dosages I'm going to read are for the full uh, two scoops, so 20 serving amount. We've got citrulline malate, 2-1, 7 grams. Uh, we've got 3.2 beta alanine, a gram of pomegranate, which I, I really like that ingredient. Mm-hmm. Big dose, too. When, it's, when it's dosed ingredient. properly, I'll, I'll caveat that, because there are some people that just kind of sprinkle it in. It's um, expensive. Yeah. A gram of taurine, a gram of alcar, one of my favorite nootropics, one gram of expensive. tyrosine, 750 of agmatine, 500 of choline, 240 of caffeine anhydrous, 200 of dicaffeine malate, which is going to give you another Ooh. 150 of caffeine. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you're looking at 390 total. Uh, 100 milligrams of citrus orantium, which is going to give you some synephrine in there and plus a bunch of other little fun alkaloids. Uh, 10 milligrams of piper nigrum, which is black pepper, and 100 micrograms of huperzine A. So. Hmm. Lots of good it. stuff. I'm digging it. I like it. Good dosages. Yeah. I like a couple. What stands out to me is the big dose of pomegranate, mm-hmm. the big dose of Alcar, yeah. big dose of tyrosine, and that is a lot of caffeine, but that 
having the two yeah. almost evenly matched sources um, should play out pretty good. Yeah, it should give you a nice, nice, nice ride. And I, I still have a bunch of the, uh, or a, a, you know, probably a half full tub of the current pre workout. I guess it's probably sold <clears> out now, but the Iron Brothers pre workout V two, and I really like that one too. That's a that's a really solid one. Mm-hmm. They had a dynamine in that one. It was a nice nice kick. Yeah. So it's interesting. I think um, there's enough. What I what I my initial thoughts when I see this formula is there's a lot that you know people like us would appreciate. Mm-hmm. You know, um, big doses of a couple of ingredients. But you know, he's sort of going obviously with a uh, different marketing plan, different branding, less less hardcore yeah. vibe. Mm-hmm. People will really like that, especially aren't used to pre workouts and stuff like that. Right. The two caffeine sources are going to keep people on the rails, but the people are really that aren't used to it are going to like the pomegranate alcar tyrosine. I think yeah. going on there. I think that's super cool. Correct. Yeah, and that's let's see. It's twenty servings for how much is it retailing for? If it's up on the site yet, it may not be. You know, Mark, man, he he. He would give it away if he could. You yeah, know what I mean, thirty-four bucks for twenty servings, so a little over a dollar a serving. But I mean, that's still you're yeah. getting full dosages of everything at the at the thing. So that's too cheap, Mark. Mark, you need to jack up that price. Uh, <laughs> and man, as long as he keeps making Prodigy, man, he he will have a, a lifelong customer in me and Sandy yeah. because we fucking love that formula. It is a it is a killer formula. Um, yeah, I dig this one. Not surprising. Um, because I think I got to try this when he first started doing this. He, uh, he didn't he send you some too? Uh, Samples? Ruthless? Yeah, that was no. a long time ago, though. No, I have not tried Ruthless. Uh, yeah, he sent me some. That was, was a very long time ago. He's been – he's he's worked hard for this this one, so I'm I'm proud of him for sticking it out and, and making it happen. You know, he's I'm, – I'm all the way biased when it comes to Mark, so. <laughs> um, but it's cool, man. I think this should, should be some good pumps and some good focus for sure. Yeah. He's got he's got one or two other things that he's revamping in the backworks that I've seen the formula for. So there's going to be, you know, if this rest of this year, if if things start to brighten up, hopefully sooner rather than later, we might see a few bigger releases coming from them too. Yeah, because he's got a pump formula coming. I know he's been talking about. Yep. Yeah, that that's, yeah, that and one other capsule product, at least. So, all right. Good all right, stuff, buddy. Man. Good times as always, and uh, yeah, I got your message. You texted me midway through the conversation. I'll be happy with that. I'm curious to see the formula because I put one of those together um, about a year ago. It, the, the brand that I was putting it for never actually got off the the, the tarmac. So uh, I'll be curious to see how much of those the ingredients actually line up, and if, if if my thinking process was in line with what you know they're thinking over there. Um, yep. And you know. we know that um, it's going to take some testing. So I was like, hey. Yeah. I. I, I yeah. I love my job. It. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, maybe you can put it to work this weekend and see, because uh, yeah, yeah. Can, well, never mind. I won't nope. say anything. No, nope. no, nope. we'll, we'll cut it there. <laughs> All right, brother. All right, listeners. Thank you for tuning in. As always, leave us a review if you haven't left us a review yet, and uh, give us some feedback on whether or not you think the the ads and sponsorships are cool. All righty. Thanks, bud. All right. See you, bud.